Well, it's a pleasure and an honor to have John Coltrane in front of our microphone here. And John, I gotta be abrupt with you. I gotta say like this, that uh, your playing has been turned antenna-like, unbeautiful, on just about everything you can think of. And uh, since the uh, playing mirrors the personality, I guess you have some, some uh, personal thoughts of that kind to say. Um, well, uh, let me follow you again. Uh, you said my plan has on what? I didn't say that. <laughs> I said the, what the critics said. Say, oh, well, they uh, seem to think that it's an angry sort of a thing. Is real. Some of them do. I don't know about do the critics feel, here. Do you feel angry? No, I don't. Uh, I was talking to a fellow today, and I told him that uh, the reason I play so many so many uh, it sounds maybe it sounds angry because i'm i'm trying so many things at one time you see like i i, I haven't sorted them out i have a whole bag of things that i'm trying to work through and get the one essential you know uh, would you I say just, would you say that you're trying to play everything you hear at well, one time or something like that no there there are some set things that i know some devices that i know harmonic devices that i know that will uh, take me out of the ordinary path, you see, if I use these. But I haven't played them l enough, and I'm not familiar with them enough yet, to take the one single line through them. So I play all of them, you know, trying to uh, acclimate my ear so I can hear, you know. In, this uh, in the uh, album liners of your latest LP, that was the Giant Steps LP, which we have played quite a lot on this show, uh, you claim that you were trying to, to get, a, a, as I understood it, a, a more beautiful sound. Would I you hope to. With that? Well, I, I hope to play uh, not necessarily a more beautiful sound, though I, I would like to, uh, you know, just say tone-wise, I would like to be able to, to produce a more beautiful sound. But now I'm primarily interested in trying to work what I have, what I know, down into a more lyrical line. You know, that's what I mean by beautiful, by more lyrical, so to be, you know, easy, so easily understood. I'm sure our listeners are, as they are mainly collectors of Coltrane records, I, I'm sure they like to hear you uh, express one thought of, of uh, what you think is, is uh, listenable among your whole production. Oh, uh, you mean of the albums that yes. I've made? Oh, uh, I, I like Blue Train uh, myself. I figured you I would. <laughs> There's such a I good band on there, you know. That's a real, that's uh, a real uh, dangerous uh, album, man. The, and uh, the, it was a good recording. Mm -hmm. uh, How do you feel about this last uh, quartet recording here, the Giant Step? Thing? I think that was my best quartet recording so far, with you the exception like of maybe Soul Train. I'd put them both about mm -hmm. the same. How would you say uh, working with Miles Davis has influenced you stylistically? Well, uh, it's, it has uh, led me into most of the things that I'm doing now, you know. Yes, I had a major stranglehold on you in that matter. I mean, he made you play the way you do, or you uh, you uh, got a chance uh, to play like well, you Well, I've do. been free. I've been so free here, you know, that uh, almost anything I want to try is... I'm welcome to do it, you know, so that's uh, the freedom has helped me I heard to you were splitting experiment. the Miles Quintet here and then trying something on your own. Yes, I am. How's that? With uh, whom? Uh, I have, an, I have uh, several men in mind, but I haven't selected the side men yet, you know. I'm going to try with the quartet. Would you feel like working quartet. with uh, a, a quartet? Yeah, to begin with, and maybe in uh, several weeks after I start, I might add a fifth man. John, uh... Which tenor plays do you think have influenced you, if any at all? All of them. <laughs> I would say all of them. But, uh, do you have a personal favorite, I mean, like you put on a record when you were at home and relaxing and so on? Well, Sonny Rollins is, uh, I think he's outstanding tenor man today, you know. And, uh, that is that's exactly usually. what Sonny Rollins <laughs> told me on this show about you. So that's, that's usually, <laughs> you know, to my be man, a mutual you know. admiration society yeah, here. Well, he's, uh, he's, he's great. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. And 
course, in the formative days, well, like got, years you, ago, it was Dexter Gordon that uh, mm -hmm. actually was a well, major. You do, you do have a strong feeling for tradition, haven't you? I guess so. I mean, I would like to even make it stronger. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to strengthen my roots, so to say, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, I didn't start at the beginning, and there's a whole lot back there that's, you know, that all young musicians should you, have. You, uh, privately, I mean, when you're listening, you go back there, I mean, just, just on your own account and listen. Well, I don't have many records in that era now, but I do plan to get them. I, I plan to include that in my repertoire, you know, all these old traditional things. So you got an I've, mind, huh? I've been trying recently to uh, search myself, you know, and try to find things that I uh, reminiscent that sound like those things. But I'm really going to do some work on that soon. Well, John, it seems like you're on with the Miles Davis oh. Quintet here, and, and thank you very much for taking the time and dropping in on this show. You're welcome. Show. Thank you very much. Enjoy it.